Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm gonna be testing Mountain Blade 2 of Banner Lords Early Access. So I didn't know this game existed or was coming out yesterday, so thank you guys in the comments for letting me know. Remember, this is early access, so it should improve as time goes on. So if you're watching this video very far into the future, it might be better or worse, we don't know yet, it didn't happen. But what I'm seeing in the graphics in general is that the game tries to have a lot of units on screen in big battles, rather than having photorealistic graphics. The game doesn't look bad, but it's not a breathtaking presentation by any means, at least in my opinion. So yeah, I consider that not being the main thing with this game. In the options menu there is a lot of things to choose from, but if you want to improve performance in general, I'll lower the shadow quality with the ambient occlusion, the character detail, especially on big battles, this is an important setting, character detail. There are many options for anti-aliasing as well, I recommend using temporal SMAA, not the X2 version, the normal one. It looks pretty good and it doesn't kill performance. If that's not enough, just consider using the presets. Medium settings seems to be the best balance with visuals and performance. On low settings it already starts to look very very different, like a game from 7 years ago or something like that. So yeah, if you want to retain the graphics as much as possible, use medium and crank up textures if you have enough VRAM for that. For the testing I'll show you two very different scenarios, one of them is a big battle with 500 units, which is the default that the game uses, so I kept it at 500. And I'm just going to go in there, see as many units on screen at the same time, to stress both the GPU and CPU at the same time. And you'll notice that both are used very very much, especially getting close to the battle. If you want to do the exact same battle in this video, check the end of the video, which has all the configurations to do the exact same thing as I'm doing here. And then I'll just show you a part of the campaign, just walking around in a town. And as you'll see there's a huge difference in performance, you can have basically half the frame rate on a big battle. You can improve performance in battle by lowering the battle size, which is the amount of units on screen. Again, the default is 500, so I kept it there. But if you do 250 or something like that, expect over 10 FPS more. But yeah, it all depends on the kinds of battles that you want to do. I'm not even going to try a thousand units on screen, that's going to be crazy. <laughs> so yeah, if you're not going to do a big battle, just take the campaign numbers as a reference, which are significantly better, again. On the CPU side of things, I tested both an i5-9400F and an i3-9100F, so a 6-core CPU and a quad-core CPU. Both CPUs had issues maintaining the GPU maxed out when I was targeting 60 frames per second. Of course, the 6-core chip was much better at maintaining those frame rates, while the i3 was able to be at least over 30 frames per second when there was a lot going on at the same time. I don't have a Ryzen 5 to compare right now, but I expect it to be similar to the i5 or a little better if the game uses the extra threads. But then on the campaign it doesn't matter that much, it usually matters when there's a lot of units on screen. Then something that surprised me, the RAM usage was very high, it was always over 8GB. It can start at 6GB on the campaign, but after like 5 minutes you'll be pretty much over 8GB no matter what. But it always stayed below 11GB, so 12GB of system RAM should be just fine. But yeah guys, that's about it. I hope you keep enjoying the video, thanks for watching and see you next time!
Yeah. <laughs> 